morning, everybody. We uh, are in, this is our last day in Alaska. So we decided to walk down the street to a local cafe, Midnight Sun the Cafe. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Because we got an early call this morning. Yeah. You got a call at 6 a.m. local time. Woke us up. So we got to work doing our final packing and uh, needed some breakfast. And once we drop our bags off at the hotel and let them hang on to them for the day, we're going to go walking around and see if we can find some parks and, and explore the sights and sounds of Anchorage. We've got until about four o'clock today and then we have to head back to the hotel and uh, catch a bus to the airport. <laughs> um, okay. That's a tea bag. Uh, tea bag, we, a little bit of loose tea. <laughs> Laurie's cup. There's another piece there on the side. All right. We are at Glacier Brew House here in downtown Anchorage. Yes, another brewery. More food. <laughs> well, we were told by two separate people that this place was amazing. Yes, we have been. We've. Both of the, the breweries here in Anchorage have been recommended specifically to us, so. And not because of our brewery connection. Yeah, right. So we've got about an hour and a half until our trolley tour here in Anchorage. So, yes, we're gonna take you guys along on that. But in the meantime, it's a little bit early for lunch at 11.30, but considering we just ate breakfast a couple of hours ago. <laughs> yeah. But if we're if we don't need it all, yeah, we're gonna be on you know the trolley tour for two hours. Then we gotta go to the airport and fly until tomorrow morning. So fly till tomorrow morning. Yes. So uh, we're gonna get in as much as we can. We gain two weeks. Yeah, we're gonna lose all those hours and try to get our bodies back in East Coast time. Yeah. But in the meantime, we're gonna see as much Anchorage as we can and taste as much of Anchorage as we can and take you guys along with us. So here we go. Last day in Alaska. Lunch time. Wait, wait. Alaska Andrews, let's see it all. Yay! Yay. Last day lined up. Oh. Yeah. So as you can see there, Laurie got a flight, and I got the Pilsner. Do blondes usually have the prickles on the tongue? Well, the prickles just come from carbonation primarily, but yeah, so you're gonna have some prickle. And I got some bread. Bready, yeah. Yeah. You got a, a side uh, five ounce pour of the Imperial Blonde, right? And that's... that's a three uh, ounce pour. Or a three ounce, yeah. This is the Imperial Blonde, and it's got some. It's much heavier, obviously, but it's got some some honey, some sweetness to it. It's what really was good. The ABV on that uh, Imperial Blonde. Uh, one moment, please. Nine. Nine percent. Nine percent Imperial Blonde. Ooh wee! I like it. You should make one of those. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should he make one of those? I can. We'll just double up that recipe. Triple it. <laughs> I can't see it, but... Laurie does this thing called beer foam scrying. Kind of like cloud scrying, but she sees things in her beer foam. Um, I had a peacock in mine once. Yeah, she had a peacock in there. You get smiley faces. There's a moose. There's a bird. <laughs> My artisticness to me. Yeah. Beer foam scrying is a new thing. So what did you think of your fish? It didn't look great. I mean, obviously it was just a piece of fish, but let me let me tell you what. It was a huge 
filet of fish and it was fluffy, cooked perfect. It was cooked, I guess, on the wood fire, whatever, but it, it was delicious. Long story short, it was delicious. So I had the French dip. Um, overall, it was okay. Uh, neither the roast beef nor the au jus were particularly hot. They were, the au jus was lukewarm at best. Uh, the roast beef was, you know, kind of cool. So um, that didn't make it the best. The fries were okay, a little bit on the greasy side. Otherwise, for not really being hungry, it worked. So Laurie asked if it was just okay because I wasn't that hungry. Um, no, I think even if I were really hungry, it would, it would have still just been okay because I expect my au jus to be hot at the very least. Uh, kind of the purpose of a French dip. And the bread wasn't really ideal for a French dip either. It weighed 75 pounds, my son weighed 70, and the fish was two inches taller than you. <laughs> That's funny. That would That's be awesome. a pink salmon, right? Notice the bumper on the front of that engine? That's called a moose gooser. This little train's job, go on the railroad tracks, hand those coal trains and bump moose in the butt and get them off that train track so they didn't derail the trains. Very important piece of equipment in Alaska because our moose are the biggest moose in the world. From antlers to hooves, an Alaskan moose will stand uh, 12 feet tall. My trolley's 11'6", so he's six inches taller than my trolley. So that is the Cook Inlet behind us. It uh, surrounds one side of Anchorage. It was discovered by Captain James Cook, I think. I think so, we're about yeah. to go see the uh, And we're going to see the statue to him. He is credited with discovering Alaska. Uh, back during the Revolutionary War, I believe. So, pretty neat. Uh, they have the second uh, most uh, differential tide. I forget what exactly the term they used for it, but it was like what 29 feet. It was from 11 Di feet to 30 or 40. Yeah, feet. so it, it was a lot of feet uh, of difference uh, between lo low tide and high tide. I think it's only beat out by. Um, the the sound up in Canada on the East Coast. I forget which one it, that is. But haven't been there either. But we're at low tide now, so you can see that uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, dry ground out there, or relatively dry ground. Right now, it's very dangerous. That clay that uh, uh, mud plus becomes like quicksand. Uh, and we never, you, all Alaskans carry a tide book and make sure you're off the mud flat. So that is the sleeping lady. That's the tops of the Alaskan range, 14,000 foot mountains. Hey, look sad, sir. Look at you. <laughs> okay, now imagine your house falling that far. Uh. Lending's a day here, 
There are 450 planes in the lake on pontoons, and over 1,100 planes around the outside of the lake on uh, various types of land gear. Um, this is the largest small engine aircraft airport in the world. Uh, every plane that does not have a business name on it is a privately owned plane. We own planes the way you folks own boats, and you park your boats at the lake, we park our planes at the lake. Now, these, uh, the planes on the pontoons have over 20,000 lakes in Alaska long enough to land and take off from, so this gets them to those kinds of places. He's got tundra tires on his plane. Uh, the average age of a plane in Alaska is 70 years old. We have all the planes that were bought back when they were inexpensive. This little Cessna right here is 70 years old. If it was for sale, which is not, it would cost you about $80,000. This is a 55-year-old Super Cub, and this is the plane everybody wants. You can take off in, uh, in 30 feet and land in 15. So this is my former student, Matt's plane. My trolley is 33 feet long, so that's how, uh, how long it takes him to take off. So we just finished our Anchorage trolley tour with Donna, who was our driver she and was awesome. tour guide. She was awesome. She had lots of... Uh, a school teacher, yeah, her, her husband was born and raised here in Anchorage. So she had a lot of great stories and, from the history of Anchorage uh, about the, uh, the earthquake of 1964, 63, 64. Nine point something. Nine point something, yeah. the, the, the largest earthquake to ever occur uh, on the planet, I think they, they yeah. said, or some, the largest recorded to ever occur. Um, it was so powerful that uh, 28 hours later, it rang church bells in Johannesburg, South Africa. Simultaneously. Uh, simultaneously, yeah. yeah. Uh, 10 churches or something, their church bells went off. Uh, this was uh, where the majority of the damage happened in Anchorage. Uh, that side of the street over there dropped like 20 feet. And out at the earthquake park where we were earlier, it dropped 50 feet. Um, the Pacific plate dropped under the, the Atlantic plate, and so it was pretty in, intense. But only nine people lost their lives. So, yeah, uh, it was because that it was somewhat was on miraculous. Good Friday. Yeah, it happened on Good Friday, so and reality. all this, all the uh, office buildings were closed. All the kids were out of school. It happened actually uh, five something in the evening on on that Good Friday, and they were supposed to have a uh, a basketball tournament at the high school that night, but. Mamas complain because they're and, bad mamas. Yeah, so mamas complained, church, and so yeah. they moved it to Saturday, and the entire school that it was supposed to be held in uh, was leveled yeah. to the ground. So anyway, really neat tour. Got to see a lot of Anchorage here. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed coming along with us. Definitely but, recommend. Yes. The tour. They give uh, coupon books here, but yeah, yeah, Anchorage Trolley. Yeah, they give you a coupon book when you do it. But it is time for us to get back to our hotel and catch our uh, shuttle, to, shuttle the to the airport because this is bringing our trip to Alaska to an end. Yep, we've, we've got about an hour left here in downtown Anchorage, and then we got to take off, go back home, go back to work. So it goes. Yes. Yeah. Hi guys. Okay. I'm not hey as guys. excited as I once was. <laughs> yeah. So it's we're at the Anchorage Airport, and come to find out that our flight to Seattle was delayed enough by yeah, a little bit. By a little bit, and that we would probably miss our connecting flight. So Alaska Air reached out to Delta and said, "Hey, you guys have a direct flight from." Anchorage to Atlanta, can we get these guys on it? Well, let me first say that that yeah. uh, they were pretty amazing. Yes, there. they sure were. And, like they cared enough that knowing that there was a very, very high chance that we would be stranded in Seattle. And so they tried to find other ways for us to be able to get home. Yep. And so that's what they did. Yep. And so everything's been wonderful except for one thing. Right. We don't have seats right now. Yeah, we don't have mm -hmm. seats yet. And I'm a little nervous. And it's delayed an hour, and so anything can change. Yeah, so it looks like we're getting into Atlanta at 8 something. Um, I think you said 8.16, right? Yeah, 8.16 as of right now. So that may kind of 
mess with our plans to to uh, meet up with our buddy Eddie Lugo. Uh, we were supposed to go over to his place and uh, have morning coffee. Have morning coffee and go live with him and and some other folks uh, as he does every morning. Uh, that may not happen at this point, but uh, we will see. But we wanted to say goodbye to Alaska uh, one last time before I have to pack all this uh, equipment up right. and we'll go let through you security. Know what happened, even yeah. though um, we're packing everything up, we'll, we'll yeah. keep you guys posted. We will keep you posted, and our, I'll put some some text in at the end here to tell you exactly what happened. Yeah, because. Uh, the gate doesn't open for three hours. Yeah, we got three hours till the gate opens, and we're probably gonna try to grab dinner somewhere around here. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> we got a long. We got a long wait, and then a long, long flight. Yeah. About seven hours or so. So. Yeah. We're uh, we're we're in for the duration. Yeah. I'm gonna close it out with that, and tell you guys one last time, from peaks to tides. We will definitely see you on the next ride. Bye guys.